Hello, welcome to Saguaro National Park. It's near Tucson, Arizona. And we have driven here, not only so that I can tell you that I know nothing about it, but mostly so that I can tell you, I don't know the first thing about the desert. Uh, that big tall cactus over there is called a saguaro. I think, probably, there's some bushy stuff in between. I don't know. There's that big spidery thing. That's an ocotillo, my brother tells me. He knows a lot more than I do. Are those prickly pear? I don't know. I know they're cactuses. They have spines. Is this a barrel cactus? Or is that a barrel cactus? Because they're not the same. Which one's a barrel cactus? It's got little fruits on top. Is that normal? And what are these other plants? Are any of them edible? That's pretty cool if they're edible. It's also cool if they're not. Not everything has to exist to serve my insatiable hunger. I don't even know. It's got this cool... It's like woody. It's like legitimately hard, but it's lightweight. It's beautiful. Look, I can see inside of the thing. I'm walking off path. Don't tell the rangers. They would be very ashamed of me. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That makes a noise like nothing else. Why does it make that noise? My dad told me this is a choya. I believe him because my mother taught me the trick for telling a choya. You can pull the spine covering off. That's it. We've exhausted my knowledge of the Southwest Desert. Thanks, Dad. I know nothing. And that's quite a pleasant place to be. Nothing around me is familiar or makes sense at, at all. I grew up in Missouri. I can tell you about big rivers. I can tell you how to canoe on big rivers, too. More, more than that, I can tell you about oaks and maples and karst topography and how that makes caves. I can't tell you the first thing about the desert. And that makes it a pretty good research project. Uh, one of the more common questions is, Hey, Mr. Teacher, sir, how long is this assignment supposed to be? It's about 10 pages. That's a lot of writing. And in order to do that amount of writing, you have to do a lot of reading. And in order to do that amount of reading, you have to actually enjoy what you're reading about. And in order to enjoy what you're reading about, you kind of have to know nothing before you start. It's true. There are some terrible research topics out there. I have a lot of guidance for picking one. And the first thing that you must do is you must not know the answer to your topic before you start. Guaranteed. What I mean is, there are certain topics about which you are already convinced. Um, these are topics that are often debated nationally in the news. You already know how you feel about abortion. You already know how you feel about suicide and depression. You already know how you feel about the NCAA paying its athletes. These are things that you already know about. And that makes them pretty bad topics for research, because what are you going to look up? I could look up anything about this place. I have no idea what's going on. I don't know the answers already. And that, oh, that's so cool. Sorry, you just caught me being interested for a second. That's what makes this place a pretty good research topic for me, because I don't know the answers. If I did know the answers, what am I going to look up? The second thing that you probably want to avoid is stuff that will upset you when you read about it. Things that are upsetting like, well, children getting hurt, or people at risk, populations that are suffering. These are fine and important and very good, but I'm also asking you to write 10 pages about it and be immersed in it for 10 weeks. I would never stop someone from writing about something that they cared about deeply. I've never done it, and I don't intend on doing it now. But you have to recognize that writing for 10 weeks about something that hurts your soul, that stinks. Oh, there's an animal over there. I heard it move and I can't see it now. Tell me if you spot it. The third piece of advice that I would give you for choosing a topic, very carefully, is that you don't have to be married to the original topic you stated that you wanted. 
if I chose to research the southern desert, and I was learning all about the Ocotillo, if I chose to research this, and then I discovered in the course of my research that I really was actually far more interested in the southern border, or maybe how people react when they're slowly dying of thirst, or, or maybe I get really, really hyper interested in how they choose national parks. That's okay. At a certain point, don't be afraid to change your research topic or question, especially if you find something more interesting. Everybody knows that. That's basic advice. But don't be afraid to change your topic or question if you learn that your original question was wrong. There are a lot of people who will get really stuck on creating a paper out of a single topic and they say, I want to show the world that this is how you solve some world problem. Maybe it's poverty. Maybe it's scarcity of resources. Maybe it's global warming. And this is how you solve it. And they discover in the course of their research that that's not how you actually solve it. At that point, it's very important that you do feel free to change your topic, change your subject, change your entire paper, because that's what research is. So join me in this moment of complete ignorance as I try to work out why cactuses leave behind wood when they die, when they're not trees, and why every flower in this whole stinking desert, except for the Ocotillo, is yellow. Do the bees see them better if they're yellow? Is that a thing? What colors do bees see? I know they can see ultraviolet. <gasps> I saw the small mammal. It was like a mammal. Dogs, we are going to walk very slowly and carefully towards the sunning Gila monster. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, he's running off the road. A Gila monster. The first one I've ever seen in my whole life. He's so far gone. Don't you dare. Oh, he's in the bush. He's poisonous, I bet. Oh, that's the first and only Gila monster I've ever seen in my whole life. 